Welcome back to the Art of Football 365. This is episode 74. Uh, we've been gone the past two weeks, taking those weeks off. Uh, I joined the Whitewater football staff. I'm on the operations staff, so it's spring ball right now. <clears throat> kind of been uh, getting ac getting myself acclimated to that, learning the ropes, uh, heading into the fall. So uh, we'll do an episode. We'll touch on that and, and talk about everything I've learned the last couple of weeks and and where I feel like I'm headed in the next couple of years. Uh, but before we do that, let's grog spike that subscribe button for us. Leave a like, leave a comment, uh, continue to give us that feedback. I do want to add an extra note in there that <clears throat> on our social medias, as well as uh, Beth Cahoon um, from Orangeville and Orangeville Inc., uh, we started a T-shirt for Eli Kleckler, who was diagnosed with cancer from Lena Winslow High School. Uh, so the T-shirt sales are live. So go ahead and <clears throat> check that out on our social media pages. Uh, spend the money, buy a T-shirt for him. All the money, all the proceeds are going directly to him and his family. Uh, so in the A15, we fight together. So let's stand up together. Let's rise up together and support this young man and his battle. Uh, so I wanted to add that note in there. Uh, make sure to share those posts for us um, and continue to help him and his family. Uh, but also check out our two sponsors, Driftless Quality Wear and Bacher Auto Group. They support us, support them as well. Uh, but <clears throat> today we're going to be talking NFL Draft. Uh, I know we've posted that on social media the last couple of weeks, <clears throat> and it, it's, it's coming fast. Next week is the draft, so <clears throat> obviously Gannon's back with me, but we do have a special guest, uh, Coach Schwelly. Uh, he is with Central Methodist University along with Gannon. He's the pitching coach there. He helps out. Uh, he does a whole bunch of stuff there for them. Uh, but on top of that, <clears throat> he's also an NFL guy. Kind of likes football a little bit. Yeah, he, lo he loves his football. And, uh, well, we've been <clears throat> waiting to do this with him, talk some football, talk NFL draft. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of hear what he's got to say, what Gannon's got to say. Uh, so let's let's just start this off with, with a basic – intro into what what's going on around the well, NFL. We all know right? what you want to ask because it's coming up on a year, you know, all right. from the line. Let's start with that. All right, we'll st we'll start with it. All right, so last year <clears throat> I I called you out on Instagram live and I said Gregory Rousseau is not going to go in the first round. He happens to go in the first round. So let's let's talk about that a little bit <clears throat> and and talk on if you got a sleeper pick in this year's coming draft that that I think will be in the second round, and you're you're, you're calling him a first <laughs> round guy. What well, what do you got to say to that? I just felt like there was teams that fit, you know, with, you know, like there was someone that was going to reach on the potential. This year, it'll be interesting because, I mean, you look at thirty different people's mock drafts. I mean, there's team on one guy, and they're not even in the first round on another guy. That's what happens when you have a bad quarterback class. You know, two guys here that are going to be okay. As pros, some of them may start. You don't have the big names like you had last year. I mean, we had these in the first three picks. And, I mean, when you don't, when you don't have that, you, I mean – you're talking about Trayvon Wilson. Someone says he can go, and I don't know if he goes in the top ten if he doesn't go one. It's going to be interesting. Um, and, like, your Cowboys last, like Parsons, who had five sacks in his college career in his rookie year because they saw him in a different position. You know, he was at Penn State. You know, they wanted him to rush the quarterback a little bit. So I would be curious to see how many teams want to do that this year. Free safety, put them at corner, you know, and vice versa. So I ever has. So, I mean, we'll see who, who that guy that is. I agree. I agree with you. Uh, I, I do think uh, there is quite a few safeties in this draft <clears throat> or quite a few corners, vice versa, that I think you'll see either make a switch in the NFL based on speed, based on – man-to-man -man conversation uh, so I do think there'll be some interesting shifts with position wise <clears throat> with some of these guys going to the league taking the next step uh, but let's start this off who's you guys is uh number one player in this year's draft obviously you got guys like Aiden, uh, Aiden Hutchinson and Trevon Walker and then you got Evan Neal and then 
initially the past couple of years or the past couple of months, it was Kayvon Thibodeau from Oregon that everyone was looking at, and they were like, "This guy more than likely is the lock to go number one." <clears throat> and it seems like he's slipped down the board a little bit. I mean, a couple picks, but uh, you're looking at the Jets looking looking like they're eyeing him down. So, who is your guys' number one player in your eyes? Um. I kind of think this is just my number one overall guy. I think Hutchinson is going to go number one in my opinion, but I think the number one guy in my eyes that I've liked him getting is Thibodeau that we touched on a little bit. I know some of the comments or worries is some of his motor stuff kind of coming into this, but I mean, his tape plays, he plays well. He he's, he's a totally different athlete in my opinion than Hutchinson kind of both being the edge type guy that they are. Hutchinson is a high motor. They both play different, but I also think, Thibodeau just gives you a little bit more and I for a higher ceiling as a pass rusher, I think for a better career, my estimation. So that's kind of my guy that I like going to that. If I did have that pick, because he's been there, they've had some reasons for why he's fallen out of that number one pick. And some of those uh, big boards and some of the selections just don't give me enough reason for me to not have him as my number one, in my opinion. So I kind of think that, but Hutchinson, I think is going to go one, which you can't go wrong also. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I don't, I'm not a big Hutchinson guy. You know, I, I'm not a big Hutchinson guy. Ruckman knows that. You know, I think there's people out there saying that he's more athletic than the bowl says. I mean, you can't show me tape that he's more athletic. You know, like, he works harder. Like, I mean, Bryce, you know, like, he he grinds. Like, he's going to – he's never going to take a play off, you know. But you're going from Big Ten, you know, offensive tackles to, I mean <clears> – <throat> I would assume they're going to have him rush on the right side against the left tackle. I mean, their left tackles in the NFL are different. I mean, you know that. I mean, just look at some of these guys in this draft. I mean, I just think that um, for me, it's Evan Neal. You know, I, I if I'm the Jaguars, you know, you went out and spent all that money on these receivers, you know, and just like you found out in, in Cincinnati, you know, they can get you can get so far and do those things. Um, and Jamar Chase is great, but I mean, you got to protect the quarterback. And and if Trevor Lawrence isn't healthy, then I mean, the Jaguars have you know zero chance. Yeah, I agree with that 100. <clears throat> percent And that is interesting. You bring up the the Aiden Hutchinson and and whoever made the comment about how he's more athletic than the Bosa brothers. First mm -hmm. off, is out of their mind for even speaking on something like that <clears throat> when you Thank haven't you. even you haven't even played it down in the national football league yet and i get it there's there's hot takes there's draft takes people are gonna spit on what they believe will happen what they think will happen but for them you can't compare to the bosa brothers right now i mean two guys that are elite pass rushers some of the best in the game uh it, it's it's not there it's i mean i see the potential i see the all pro capabilities in hutchinson uh <clears throat> but I, i'm gonna go with with a little mix up here i i like evan neal i i honestly would say him going number one would be a massive pick for Jacksonville, especially considering <clears throat> if, if, like you said, if Trevor Lawrence isn't isn't upright and he's on his back, the J the Jags are going to win two games, two two three games, and without without the protection, it's just not going to <clears throat> to equal success there in Jacksonville. I mean, regardless, it probably won't result in success there anyway. But <clears throat> I'm going to switch it up here, and I'm going to tell you my favorite draft prospect in this class and my number one overall prospect I guess I would say in a way is Kyle Hamilton the safety from Notre Dame <clears throat> now before you guys roast me dive into this speak on how I'm talking about the number one guy that's probably gonna go <clears throat> after the top 10 he probably won't go in the top 10 uh on possibility but for me to say that I just I see so much potential in his game and the safety position is so valuable nowadays especially I mean, you see every team across the board either lacking a safety, either lacking a cornerback. Uh, and just the potential I see in Kyle Hamilton, like <clears throat> comparison away, I guess I would say Tyron Matthew to me. That's what I, I see, the honey badger within him, uh, his instincts that he has on the field, his tackling, uh, his ability to run sideline to sideline. I like what he's got. And I wanted to mix it up because you guys, you guys both listed two guys that I would consider. So we're going to go with Kyle Hamilton. <clears throat> but 
So let's take a look at this draft order as I'm looking over. We got the Jags, the Lions, Texans, Jets. So we've already kind of touched on Jacksonville. They're, they're going to need that offensive lineman. And if they don't go line, I mean, the safe pick is Aiden Hutchinson if they choose not to trade that pick. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about team needs in, in this top five. Who do you guys see? Uh, what, what's a number one need for the Detroit Lions? You want to go first? I mean, they have a lot of needs you know, yeah. uh, for me. You know, and I'm not bashing them. Uh, you know, I thought they played really hard this year. Um, you know, I think Dan Campbell is going to be a good dude. But I think they, they made a lot of mistakes. You know, they took Okuda at number three a couple of years ago. Yeah. You know, rumors were that there was some people trying to trade up, and they didn't. Uh, they didn't They didn't make the trade. They took the guy. You know, he's banged up and stuff, but I don't take cornerbacks in the top five picks. You know, like, I, 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 I just don't. You Unless know? you're Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, he's good, but – He's not even on the team that drafted him. You know, like, those guys are just tough to keep around. Yeah. Um, you know, for me with Detroit, you know, I was hoping um, – I'm not a Lions fan, but I was hoping if the, you know, Eagles um, wouldn't have traded – I think they traded with the Saints. Um, yeah, yeah, if yeah. they wouldn't have traded, I would have liked to have seen them get two of the Eagles' first-rounders for that for that pick there at two. Um, felt like the Eagles need some pass rush or, or O-line help. But like the the Lions just need more picks, yeah. you know. The new coach is good with young with young guys, and so I think the more like young talent they can get in there, um, the better. You know, I'm a Packer guy and Ruckman. I would like to see Hutchinson go there because I don't think he's going to do anything um, in the NFL. That's just me. I hope I'm wrong because the kid he works hard. You know, my brother knows him. You know, they were Michigan high school athletes together, um, and he's he's a great kid. But at the end of the day. I mean, I don't like them at two. I don't like them at three. You know, Detroit needs a lot. of. They need a lot, you know, and we'll see where they go. I think they go um, somewhere on the defense. I think Kyle Hamilton could go there, um, but they could trade out. The smart thing with Hamilton is to trade out, see where people are, yeah. and take them. Cause like you said, I think – I don't disagree with you with Hamilton. I just think it's going to be the right fit for him, you yeah. know, like where does it go that he can play – right away and also you know you don't want to play in you know in a secondary that's not very good because if you don't have very good corners he's just going to be running around the field you know not knowing what to do mm -hmm. and that won't be good for early in his career so before rugman goes your hot take here is hutchinson gonna slip a little bit is, is that what you're is that what you're saying i i don't think he will um but if i'm one of those picks and i need a lot of a lot of, uh, you know, if I need a lot of talent, because we're not even close. Jaguars, Lions, Houston, Jets, they're not close. You yeah, know, yeah. you and I know that. Aiden Hutchinson's not coming in to change that franchise around. No. Like, there's nobody in this draft like that because there's no QBs. You know, I would trade out, maybe get a first-rounder next year, you know, see what happens. Um, you know, people saying he's this or that, he may be, but he's not going to make the Lions go from a – four win team to a 10 win team like that's not gonna happen you i know? do agree so, with that I, I do think so, that the top five in general <clears throat> i just think with the with the top five even i mean you, you take a look at it like top 10 into the top 15 i mean there's teams up there that none of these players necessarily are going to take them to the next level i mean outside of maybe <clears throat> looking at baltimore with pick number 14 i mean that's a team that could maybe snag a guy trading up like, I feel like that's a team to watch for in a, in a trade-up candidate situation because, I mean yeah, – Like a Garrett Wilson or something like that. Yeah, I mean, they're a team that, that is right there or in the, neck of, in the neck of the woods. Like, they're right there to take the next step. But, I mean, you look at it, you got Jacksonville, Detroit, Houston, Jets, Giants, Panthers, Giants again, Falcons, Seattle, Jets. Like, this this top ten, this top eight, <clears throat> none of these teams are, are guys are, – are, are teams that going to go out and, and make a – a first round selection that's going to add five more wins, six more wins in their team, uh, in their record and, and allow them to get a playoff berth. So I think you're looking at a, a weird situation this year with limited quarterbacks in this draft where you're going to see a lot of teams trying to trade out. And I think that will be very interesting to watch come draft night, but all right, Ruckman, I'll, I'll stop talking. You can talk about Detroit. 
No, I some <clears> of the <throat> points that Shirelli hit on are exactly what I thought. I mean, this with just the pure talent in this year's draft is so different because there was um, saying if Jacksonville like even wanted to trade their top pick, it's hard to get that value for what a number one pick would be in kind yeah. of previous trades with the uh, players that are just up in the top of the draft class. But in my opinion, I think Detroit needs to trade out and you can get, you know, a 15th or 20th pick probably and flop and probably still pick up a pick next year. And there's enough defensive picks, which is what they probably will go with their second pick, obviously with Hutchinson, Thibodeau, or even walkers there. But yeah. I think doing that, like exactly what I was going to say was what Shirley said. They're not going to have anybody come in and switch the whole franchise. They're just not going to put these teams that bad. If you can get another first round pick and still get an elite defensive guy, plus maybe get that with another guy in the second round or another first round next year, that's a win-win in my opinion, because I would do that over one guy. And that <laughs> one guy could not turn out to be anything. You could have a better hit with one out of the two guys in my opinion. And that's, just for trading out of that position, which isn't super high, but it's better leverage than I think in some of the other ones. But there's also going to be a tendency, I think, in my opinion, it's one of the things I'm most forward to watch is um, what are the trades going to be come draft night or leading up into draft night. Now with Debo Samuel, the free agent, that switches the whole landscape. I mean, the guy who took the lead by storm this year who created a whole different position just by the way he played. And then also with quarterbacks, I mean, I've seen some hot takes with Kyler Murray getting traded to the Jets for a whole package of picks and Zach Wilson coming back, which is really crazy to think about. But you just don't know what today's NFL and free agency. Mm. So there's a whole lot that's going to go there. And that plays a big time in the picks. And I, I kind of – what I was telling Shirley today at practice with the Packers too with getting a veteran wide receiver, somebody that's also in the NFL already drafting. You may have a whole lot that plays out. And I think there's teams trying to get out that can't get out. So – there's going to be a lot to, and it's more so than just not the draft and the big board as in past years with the talent there and drafts and all that. It's more, I think, besides the draft, in my opinion. Yeah, I want to make one more comment on that or within the top five before I, I want to ask you guys something. But I think the one team you can look at within the top five, I, I know you're talking about maybe the Jets swing a trade out here. But honestly, I think I think out of the top five, the Jets are probably the team most likely to stick it out and stay in the top five. And I say that because I really think Kayvon Thibodeau is a lock to go there. I think Kayvon Thibodeau I will be there. <clears throat> I think he'll be there. I mean, because you start to look at it, Jacksonville. If Jacksonville takes – if they take the tackle or if they take Hutchinson, uh, you're probably going to see gonna, Detroit. definitely going to be a turn <laughs> we talked about earlier. Who goes number one? That's going to be – Oh, big. yeah. If Hutchinson goes one, then every – then it kind of comes in order a little bit more. But if not, then you might bump it down a little bit because then Hutchinson will go two or three. Yeah, but I'm saying if I honestly think if Thibodeau does not go with the Jets, I know you're high on Thibodeau. Yeah, but no, I, I'm not I'm just talking to him in general. I was, I got, I got what you're saying, though. But I'm saying, okay, so if if Thibodeau goes number four, which I think he will, but if he doesn't go to the Jets, I see him as a candidate to slip and then a team to to come up to grab him. I think you'll see a team come yeah, come call the trade. trade on the draft night thing for sure. I can see that because I I just see him as a lock to go four or slipping like that's what I see but my question for you guys both of you since you're both Packers guys so it gets interesting today with a guy like Debo Samuel talking about wanting a trade and in Green Bay needing a wide receiver so I mean what you guys are picking 22 and 28 first round picks to trade right away that <clears throat> Frank could have tomorrow morning so first my first question for you guys about it is are you making that deal? Are you are you chasing after Debo Samuel and and making him one of the richest wide receivers in in the league? I mean, based on and, and part of the reason they came out today that he wants the trade is because he doesn't want the hybrid role anymore. He wants he wants strict strictly receiver, which honestly, I mean, in the it's situation long, with Green Bay, I agree. I agree hundred percent. And I think it's smart on his part to get paid like a wide receiver, play wide receiver, because like you said, longevity. I mean, if he sticks with that running back position, his career could be done within the next four to five years, and that's not worth it. But <clears throat> I don't think – I think for this situation, for Debo to go to Green Bay, I would think it would be, like, a great situation for him because, I mean, he doesn't need to be that hybrid guy in Green Bay. You don't need him to come and run the ball with Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon there. You don't need him to come run the ball. So, first off, are you guys doing the trade? Second off, what's it going to take to make him a Green Bay Packer? And if not to Green Bay – where do you see this man going, if anywhere? I mean, there's a lot of contenders. I mean, shoot, I, there's memes all over social media. I mean, you got almost every other team besides 
San Francisco, that picture with their logos, who's in on Debo. But my idea kind of more so when I thought about Debo was offering for the trade and giving more of like a two to three year, maybe four really high end type deal, which the Packers have already been known to do with their previous signees. I don't know financially how that works out, but let's say for that example, it would because Debo's in a prime position and he's just starting to scratch the prime of his career and still young getting into that role. That would be good for him and also the team with Aaron Rodgers because he could have those couple years for Rodgers to play out while also learning from Rodgers and then being able to hit that free agency when that contract's done and probably leave the Packers depending on what the situation looks like or give him an option if the quarterback situation is different in Green Bay. But I think that'd be a win-win for his career and also the Packers getting a huge time playmaker. I mean, what he can do when he gets a ball in his hands on just a simple screen is, I mean, it's game changing. You saw what he did carrying those guys through the playoffs, getting them to the playoffs. But other than that, I mean, it's too hard, I think, right now because you can make too many good calls and fits for Debo going to other teams across the league. But that's kind of my specifics of what I'd like to see and what the Packers can maybe try and work out. Because I know I know Shelly's high on this because he was already talking about it today in practice. Let's hear it. Well, for me, honestly, uh, I would like A.J. Brown to get into the mix here with wanting out of Tennessee. Okay. Um, they're all in the same class. I think Terry McLaurin is going to sign here soon um with Washington they really like him but like I was t- telling Gannon earlier um just like Devonte Adams and Tyree Kill you know the agent and the team the new team have to agree with a deal before you can even talk you know like Devonte's deal is done you know he was a Raider you know well now it's like what can we do which is why I think a lot of Packers fans were kind of confused you know only a first and a second you know when the Raiders are the ones that really wanted them. You know, they were going to give them all that money. You know, for me, I want to leverage. You know, I, we got DK out there. We got Samuel. I'd be happy with either of them, like I'm sure you would, on your, you know, with your guys' team. But I think you leverage and just say, listen, this isn't going to be their last contract. You know, they're receivers. They're, they, after this one, they got two more. You know, and you can point to, well, look what Devonta Adams got after he was Aaron Rodgers' number one guy. You know, and I, and I hope um, – we can work something out for, you know, like Gannon said, I think I can't see an agent working a deal out for longer than what Rogers is going to be there for, you know? So if you're looking at three years, you know, I'd say about 18 million, maybe the Packers can do that. You know, um, it makes sense. And you know what we're going to give away. I mean, a first, hopefully not two ones. Yeah. You know, that's the question. Uh, you know, Green Bay will never give two ones. They'll never do it. Um, like they'll. The they'll only never thing would do be it. if it was not in the same that. year. That's the only thing. I, they do do two ones, but that's it. Yeah, but they only got one number one next year at this point. Yeah. So I can't see them giving a one away for someone that they're going to have to give money to. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're going to have to not only make a trade, they're going to have to pay this person which they have not been willing to do ever, except for we went out and signed the Smith brothers because we were panicking because our defense was so bad. Yeah. You know, um, if we gave 20, if we gave pick 22 away, kept our, um, our other pick and, you know, even gave this year's second or next year's second away, I think it's a good deal for either of them. I'm, I'll only say A.J. Brown because I know if a third guy gets in there, then one of the teams will be like, well, shoot, we better get what we can, you know, before nobody wants them. Because, I mean, where would you rank those three? Like, who would you want right now if you have Aaron Rodgers? Do you want A.J. Brown, you know, D.K. or Samuel? Like, what are you looking at? Honestly, honestly, for me, I'm taking D.K. I'm, I'm, I'm taking D.K. and putting him in a Packer uniform just because I see the – like, I'm, I mean, obviously, it's right in front of your face. You see the, the physique that the man's got, the over-the-top capabilities, obviously, the speed. I mean, you watched him chase down the DB from Arizona. I just – okay, before you go again, before you oh, go. No, no, I, I just got to – I'm not going to argue. I just want to say something, my opinion on this, because I think it's, it's an interesting topic, and it's what I thought about with the Packers draft. But go, keep going. I just – so, in my opinion, I guess for me, like, you look at Debo, and you look at him almost like him having played the hybrid role – uh, him catching the screen routes, him r- taking a screen, a five-yard screen pass, turning it into 60, 60 yards. I think – I mean, I think he can hold that up. 
I think he can continue to do good things, be successful. But I also I'm looking at a guy like DK and I'm saying Aaron Rodgers he's going to throw the ball uh mid range. He's going to throw the deep ball. He's going he's not he's not a type of quarterback that's going to sit back in the pocket and just sling a little screen pass, which I mean Debo obviously he's shown he can catch the mid range and the deep ball. But I just I just in my opinion you look at a guy like DK or AJ Brown. I like AJ Brown too. Uh, so honestly, I, if I'm Green Bay, I'm considering one of those two guys before I consider Debo, and especially because I think the asking price is going to be higher for Debo in general. Uh, well, so, well, they're a team that wins. You know, like the 49ers are going and the Titans are going to win. So yeah. like they're not. That's where I think the trade for those two teams is really hard, because whereas like the Seattle, they're they're rebuilding. They'll take picks. I think they're waiting it out to see a team get greedy and give more than what they should give. Yeah. You know, whereas like the Titans in the AFC South, I mean, they're going to have a chance to make the playoffs. Um, you know, so is so is the 49ers with or without Debo. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Debo's frustration is playing running back, taking hits, but also it's about the quarterback situation. Yeah. You know, I think he's a Garoppolo guy. I mean, I think he is like he he's like he seemed to play better in those games, seemed to give a little bit more effort. And Debo's been hurt, you know, like Debo, yeah. Debo been hurt. And um you know, for me as a Green Bay guy, you know, obviously any of them would be great. You know, any of them would be great. At the end but of if, that, it yeah. came out, if it came out and was like, you got Debo Samuel for pick 22 and the, and the, and the second first round pick, I'm like, I don't like that. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't like that because I think like, just like you said earlier, there's going to be guys there in the 20s that can play for us oh, and yeah. help us. So is Green Bay going yeah. <clears> to, <throat> if, if they don't make the trade, if they don't, I mean, first off, I want well, to say. Let I, me talk about the trade real quick, because we're right. just with the three players, and then it'll kind of give me into what the Packers are going to do with who I like for the draft. Like, and then you guys can go off that. But I think the biggest thing with the wide receiver thing out of those three is Debo. Just, just the way Aaron Rodgers and Matt Lafleur how this offense is, there is deep plays, and there is a lot of those intermediate 15, 20, 25 yard passes in the offense. That's there. That's always going to be there with Rodgers. But when the offense is going good, it's the balls that are getting out of Rodgers' hands in less than two seconds. And I think when you look at DK, Brown, and Debo, out of those three, you're taking Debo for that role, in my opinion. And that's not just one specific role. That's in the whole offensive role. Like you said, he can also go get the deep ball if you need that. And that's also my reasoning for why I really would like Chris Olave to be a Packer if we do have that 22nd pick, if he is there. Because he's the most polished route runner wide receiver in this class, and I don't think it's really close. A lot of the other top guys in the first round are more your projectable big guys. Go get it, you know, t- touchdown red zone type targets, which are great to have. But I think for the Packers fit for Rodgers and everything, personally, I think the guy could flourish quicker is Olave or if Adebo, those type of players. If there is a rookie wideout that would come in and make the biggest impact, I think it's going to be Chris Olave <laughs> just because his maturity and how he runs routes, it's, it's different. And he's athletic and fast, which is just even better. And I think that – connection with Rodgers would be really scary and it's the same type of principles playing wise as Debo not saying they're the same type of wide out but it's not just all down the field and red zone targets and all that what are we getting there to get to the red zone and how are we getting our yards to get to the points I think it's what makes the Packers and what for offense comfortable and good in my opinion I got two things and I want to say first off <clears throat> I think come draft night I think it's more of a possibility you see DK or AJ Brown get traded than it is Debo I just think with this Debo news coming out now, you're going to see a lot of teams scramble and trying to figure out if it's even possible, or even yeah, that's what they are. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, you're looking at the 49ers, and just because a guy requests a trade doesn't necessarily mean this team is going to go out and make the trade. <clears throat> There's a possibility they keep this around, hang this out, and, and see what happens. And I just don't think it's going to happen come draft time. <clears throat> would I, Would I like to see something like that shake up the, the draft? Yeah, that'd be pretty pretty entertaining, but. I think you're more likely to see a guy like A.J. Brown or D.K. get traded within this draft. But if I'm Green Bay <clears throat> and I'm not – if I'm not going out and I'm not and I'm not making these trades and I'm going to stick out with the 22nd and the 28th pick, honestly what I, what I see right now with Green Bay is I don't think they're going to take a wide receiver with that 22nd pick. And, I mean, you've seen it the last couple – the last couple of years with Green Bay. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I like. It's not what's going to happen. <laughs> See, it's like I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay, Green Bay's got two first-round picks. I think they're going to use the second pick on the receiver at 28. I can see a guy like Sky Moore 
from Western Michigan going to Green Bay. And I say that because <clears throat> it's a speed guy. It's a guy that's going to get open. It's a guy that Rodgers is going to allow to get open. Uh, so if they do draft the receiver, I like Sky Moore there. Now, if Alave is there at 22, I think you heavily consider that. But honestly, I, I think Alave is going to go before that. So maybe you see you get a guy like Traylon Burks from Arkansas uh, to slide in there. That's a possibility. But I think if you miss out on that, outside of that, you got a guy like Jahan Dotson from, from Penn State, which is a possibility. But if not, I'm Green Bay, and I'm looking at possibly adding an edge possibly adding a D end at 22 and then going receiver at 28. That's, that's what I think would be the best case scenario there. If you miss out on a guy like Alave or choose not to make a trade. What do you think about that? Shwelly? I don't think we're going to take a, I don't think we're going to pick at our spot either pick. Okay. I, I don't, I don't think we're going to be, I think um, that we're going <laughs> to trade up um, in there because to be honest, um, it's funny because Gannon and I are big Packers fans, and I think neither of us agrees with who we're going to take, which is the – and I'm sure that you and the Cowboys fans are the same. But but for me, um, the second-round pick from the Raiders is the interesting thing, uh, more so than the first-round pick, because that second-round pick is going to help us trade up. Um, you know, it's, it's the 53rd pick. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think when you get in the teens – if Garrett Wilson's still there, I know I know Ruckman likes Olave. Um, oh, but, Wilson's but better. For, but for me, um, Wilson has some breakaway <coughs> speed that um, it remind and his shiftiness reminds me of early Devontae. Um, and and to be honest, as long as the receiver has some skill, it doesn't matter who they are and what their name is when they play for Aaron Rodgers. And you can be like, oh, it's a Packer guy talking. Yeah, but dude, James Jones. Was a stud in Green Bay. Jordy Nelson. Yeah, but I mean, he was a, at least a I, second I, rounder. I, okay, that, 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 I was waiting. I was waiting. But he was a second rounder. You know, like you know, and so I don't think we pick. I think we trade up out of our first pick, and I think the second pick we're going to be trading out. Um, I just think that we're looking at linebacker, and I think that there's going to be some that fall that we're interested in. And I think that those picks are going to be interesting because I think a lot of teams are going to trade up the back end to get another pick. You know, like I'm hearing the Rams are going to try to get in there at the end of the first round. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're, we're good candidate to trade with. We'll have already picked and we already have a second rounder, you know, so if it gets us another, you know, if it gets a second rounder next year or their second round pick, I mean, I want to make four picks inside the top, you know, 55 picks. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, but and I'm with Ruckman. If we hang at 22 or 28 with our second first round pick, and Olave is there, and we take him, yeah, I'll leave feeling good because we didn't take Jordan Love, you know. <laughs> and 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 Ruckman laughs, but and, and Bryce, you have no idea what that feels like, um, <laughs> you know, sit, sitting there and and um, you know, and you think it's a joke, you know, and and, and it's not a joke, <laughs> and uh. The second round pick, and you can still say the guy's been great, AJ Dillon, and you're like, we just took a running back in the second round, you, you know, mm-hmm. and and the dude's been great, and I love AJ Dillon to death. It's not his fault. It's not Jordan Love's fault either as a person, you yeah. know. But you know, we're talking about taking a first round quarterback, Bryce, when you have Aaron Rodgers, and the guy's going to be not a Packer in two years. I mean, how? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> have you seen oh, that? Yeah. Oh, goodness, like you have to explain that to me, Bryce. Oh, trust me, I, I remember sitting there come draft. Well, he there. hasn't gone through that. He's had CD <laughs> Lamb and Micah Parsons the last two years to celebrate hey, the first round. So, but here's the thing with Dallas is before I go back to Green Bay, I just want to say like Dallas knows how to freaking draft. Will McClay, the 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 quote unquote GM without being the GM. Because you know Jerry's got to have the title. He's got to have all that that fun, cool stuff. I mean, well, duh, he's got the yacht. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got the yacht. So, but the guy that's really drafting for us, or I mean, outside of making the final decision, but the guy who's scouting these players, the head guy in that room is Will McClay. And you look at a guy like him, and he he knows how to control this draft. He knows when to trade up. He knows when to stick it stick it out. Uh, I mean, you see a guy like C.D. Lamb falling, and we make that we best player available. And a guy like Micah Parsons last year, who everyone's saying, 
at the time, like you said, five sacks in college, blah blah blah. <clears throat> but here's the thing: Dallas saw what was what was what was happening in that draft. They realized they were going to miss out on the two DBs. They were going to miss out on Horn, and they were going to miss out on Sertain. And Will McClay, he says, okay, let's let's trade up, let's let's or trade back, let's add some more ammo. And we're going to pick up Micah Parsons, who turns out to be one of the best linebackers in the NFL period this past year. Right. And so I think you look at a team like Dallas, and I'm, I'm looking at pick 24, and I feel good. Like, I feel good because because I'm, I'm interested to see what we do here. I wouldn't be shocked if we trade up. I wouldn't be shocked if we trade back. And whatever we do, I think we're going to end up being just fine in, in this first round <clears throat> just because I have so much trust for what we do with the draft that, that I'm, I'm cool with it. Uh, I mean, outside of the draft, I don't have much trust in this this front office, looking at free agency, looking at all that. But the draft, I mean, if I'm Dallas, I'm obviously looking at an offensive lineman. Yeah, where you, where uh, you interior, <laughs> interior. Oh, you you got to you got you got to look for the guard. You got you got to, and I mean, I, I. Uh, or you can get yourself. Tired. There's some stuff, dude. There is there is some offensive linemen that are studs. I mean, a guy that. I've kept my eye on the past couple months, and I've seen his name uh, talked about for the Cowboys the last couple weeks. Uh, and even in this <clears throat> draft guide, shout out Connor Livesley uh, from the Dallas Cowboys writing team. He does all that stuff. So I got his his NFL draft guide pulled up right now. And, and his with pick 24, he's got Dallas taking Zion Johnson from Boston College. And mm-hmm. to me, that's a golden pick. Golden oh. pick. It's a beautiful pick if if he makes it to 24 because I could very well see him going before that. Oh, yeah. uh, but I'm happy with that pick. I mean, it's not the sexy pick. It's not the it's not the CD Lamb of the world, but it's a guy that's going to come in and get the damn job done because the mm-hmm. offensive line that Dallas has sucks, sucks. And you got you got Tyron Smith, who's who honestly I could have seen him retire in this past offseason. I would have been fine with it because the man injury prone. He, he's done. His career's over. Uh, hopefully, he can stay healthy. I mean. The dude's a monster when when he's healthy and capable of being in the lineup. But <clears throat> literally letting Lyle Collins go for chunk change uh, to to New uh, where did he go? Did he go to New England? Was it New, no? Where did Lyle Collins go? You know, am I tweaking? Yeah, he went to uh, the Bengals, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah, did. He told he told Joe he Burrow that it's going to be yeah. a security guard. Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, he signed with them. Yeah, so we cut Lyle Collins. He he signs. We trade Amari. Uh, yeah, and then Zach Martin's really your only anchor there on the offensive line now. I mean, center, we lost Frederick uh, like a year or two ago. I, I think Linderbaum yeah. would be a really safe pick for you guys. in the first Him game. as well. Him as well. I know a couple people <clears throat> that are saying Linderbaum's the best player in the draft. The, well, and the safest pick in the draft. problems with his reach and his length and his arm size. <laughs> Some of the stuff here, pro stuff, but I mean, you go look at the film with what he did for three years at Iowa. He just dominated people every day. I mean, yeah, no, I agree. Well, I think he was trying to come out as a guard, right? And so they were worried about his reach because he was going to be playing guard. But I think at this point, everyone's got him labeled as true center. And so I think pretty much people are comfortable taking him. I think just like any year, it's going to be about the draft and how it goes because, um, you know, for teams like Dallas, you know, they want to see a lot of defensive guys um, stay on the board mm-hmm. because a lot of these teams that need, uh, you know, a guy like that, like Steelers, you know, like New England. You got a quarterback then also. Like, but they need, they need so many defensive guys and offensive linemen that if, if they can keep these defensive guys on the board, and they're taking defense, 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 and Lindenbaum falls, and, you know, all these other guys fall, that's their only chance. You know, if it's going yeah. defense in the top ten picks, then all these teams that need need interior offensive linemen are going to start reaching. They're going to reach up. <clears throat> no, and, I do. you know, another guy, another guy that I, I think I think I've read that you like, um, Bryce, is that Kenyon Green yeah. from Texas A&M. Yeah. Um, you know, you're looking at somebody – they ran the ball good at Texas A&M <laughs> against those SEC defenses, yeah. you know, and I know that the Cowboys talked about how they want to get back to running with Zeke up the middle. Um, I know that people are like, well, Pollard's better. Well, yeah, he's more explosive, but your interior offensive line is so bad. How can Zeke mm-hmm. be good? Yeah. You know, like look at Derrick Henry. 
If Derrick Henry in games that Derrick Henry's not good, it's because he can't get through the line. Once Derrick Henry gets through that that line, I mean, it's hard to get him down. 100%, and I think they're yeah. looking at they're looking at interior offensive line licking their chops right now because I think there's six legit dudes that if they if they get to Dallas and even if they get to Dallas's pick and they got four of them there would not shock me if they traded back even further exactly. knowing that they're good knowing that they're good with any of those guys and then i i think if that something like that happens where you're in a scenario where Dallas has has four of them offensive linemen still on the board <clears throat> i think you trade out you trade maybe back i mean maybe you stay in the first round maybe you even trade out to the second but then then you're at the point where you're just getting more ammo in that second or third round where i think Dallas looks at receiver and I think you start to look at a guy like <coughs> my bad. I think you're starting to look at a guy like George Pickens in the second round. Whereas I don't think Dallas is going to be interested in him. He's got a bigger a bigger body type. I'd like to see honestly see Pickens go to Chicago. Uh, but I think you're looking at a possibility where Dallas has the chance to to grab a receiver <clears throat> in the beginning of the second round, second or third, uh, maybe a, a lower tier guy. But I I just personally think. If we're going to go offensive line, to me, I think we either got to go receiver or we got to go DB next. Uh, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad with an edge either. We definitely need to shore up the defensive end spot. Or after. safety. <clears throat> Here's the thing with that. You know Dallas ignores the hell out of that safety position. <clears throat> as much as as much as much I'd love them to draft a safety, I mean. Yeah, they ignore him in the draft. I mean, what have we done outside of signing Malik Hooker at safety? Well, no, I mean you're right, you're right, you're right. But I, but I, I'm just thinking like I'm not even talking about the first pick. I'm talking about you know if if Hamilton's the only one off the board, you know, and we're in the second round, <coughs> you know, they'll take best player, you know, like they've done it every year and they're going to continue to do it. Like just oh, like yeah. you already said, Dallas going to take the best player. And so if there's a safety that they that they like, which I assume that there's one or two that they probably have their eyes on. And I would say that they've done a good job with that in the, in the drafts in the past. You know, if there's not a guy that they don't like, um, they're not trading up for. for. Um, but if they got they got three guys circled right now that they'll go up and get that, you know, they'll pay the price for. But, again, you look at their picks, they have 24, 56, and 88. That's not a lot of ammo to go up and get somebody. Yeah. You know, like last year, they had some, they had some picks um, to go up and get people with, you know, Dak being out that year. Um, and them not having good of a season as as they usually do, they had some picks to go to do that. And they moved back, and they even they got even better, you know. And that's where that's where I'm at. Um, but it's going to be scary for them because you don't want to trade below Tampa Bay because because they need one. Like yeah. they're they like they're taking an interior offensive lineman. Um, they lost what two this off season? Yeah, they only lost one for sure. I'm trying to think. One retired, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I think I think one retired <clears throat> and somebody signed with somebody else. Yeah, I can't. But it. that's my thing is like you got to be careful who you trade trade below because you never know, you oh, know. So maybe it's a year they stick their pick and they go to work. Um, you know, obviously we're not in the room. I'm sure they already have it. They already know who they want. Um, you know, and I'm sure Green Bay has a couple receivers. And it's interesting, you know, Bryce going back to Green Bay. It's annoying being a fan and you hear, well, you know, we were thinking about trading up for Justin Jefferson. Like we were really on trade talks for that. Uh, and I'm like, just leave that alone. Like leave me and Gannon alone. Yeah, just don't you even know what I mean? Like like leave me and Gannon alone. We took Jordan Love. It's just salt <laughs> salt in the wound right there is what it is at that point. You know, like Bryce, you understand what I'm saying? Like I get it. it I mean, I that's how I am with, with free agency in the trades with Dallas talking about, oh, we were gonna trade for for uh, Earl Thomas. Oh, we were going to trade for, for Jamal Adams. Oh, we we're going to go out and address <laughs> this position. Yeah, no, I get it. It's just not in the draft. I mean, it comes down to draft time, and I know Dallas is locked in on the draft, but I do want to make one more comment about how you mentioned Dallas is going to take the best player available. And honestly, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Gannon, you like Alave. If Alave is there at 24, Dallas is taking him. That's my oh. take. Dallas is taking Alave. Oh, dude! I just don't see him going to Johnson's there. I, 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 I don't know. I just, I just personally think that. Who do you like better, him or Jermaine Johnson? Alave. Oh man, 
I like Olave. I'm I'm high on Olave too. I'm with Gannon on that. I think Garrett Wilson's the best receiver in the class, and I'm gonna go ahead and put Olave damn near right behind him outside of Jamison Williams Williams from Alabama. Oh, so that's a good question. Uh, that's a good point there. Where do you have Jamison Williams at with the injury? I I don't is honestly. He, is he getting out of round one? No, no. He's going. That that would be. That was like my. Where one you got him going? I'd say top like fifty. New Orleans, Chris Olave, in my opinion, for the Packers. I think New Orleans or Philadelphia. You think New Orleans, or you think Philadelphia for the third year in a row is going to take a receiver in the first round? I mean, at this point, Philly. I don't even know what Philly's got going on over there. I mean, they got the. You picks. want the, You want to take another receiver? That's why you're. You're putting it into the universe, just yeah. like when you jinx my Packers <laughs> losing to the dang 49ers. Hey, 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 I was upset the, the week before with Dallas losing to him. Actually, Dallas didn't well, even yeah, lose I, to him. They got you always take your You always take that crap out on us, and me and Gann don't appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I love talking crap about the Packers. So you think you think he's going in the middle of the first? Jamison Williams? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think he'll probably either be the second or third receiver off the board. I think Garrett Wilson's a lock to be the first receiver off the board, in my opinion. But I also I think, think Greg Longin, I think Greg London's got a chance to go before Williams just because of the knee stuff. I mean, if, if Williams was healthy, I think he would have been the number one whiteout overall. I'm not that high on London. But well, everybody's uh, uh, <laughs> Dodgers have got their hands on Williams already. So, I mean, they already know. They already have an idea of what that's oh, going to yeah. be like. Yeah, 100%. But do, I, you, but, do, you, do, you, uh, do you think that – there's going to be a position that just starts flying off the board. Like, do you think that's receiver? I think it's cornerback. Okay. I think it's uh, offensive lineman. See, see. But, but I went back and forth with DBs. It's funny you say that because you know, with all the DBs, especially with South Garner going, I mean, he can, he's going to be a top seven pick, I think, almost. Here's here's my thing with that is I, I think, like saying O-lineman, I think it's a possibility, but I also don't in a way because I think early on in the draft you're just going to see those tackles go. I, I think the interior offensive line are going to be the ones that stick around, which is important for Dallas. But there's But I just think those tackles I think you're going to see like four four tackles go within the top top 20, top 15 almost maybe. I think a guy that uh, in this mock draft I'm looking at right in front of me right now. They got Trevor Penning going number 16 overall. And to me, I think that's a guy who could slip into the second. I think Trevor Penning, after his whatever it was, I, not combine, it was some – maybe the senior boy. Raw, or but he, that's what they said. They said it's a, it's a remodel, it's a model project. But, I mean, he's – He looked out of shape, I think, is what they were saying. Yeah. And, they, and he's got anger management bad, issues. Bad like, body. God. Yeah, I just – Some of those videos at the senior bowl and he was throwing people down. Yeah, I'm like, dude, calm did down. You see the video, did you see the video today or whatever that they showed up with him and the Ohio State guy mm -hmm. where he just threw the dude down and they had to separate him? Probably. I mean, it makes sense. I've seen him do it like 15 times on videos the last two weeks. Yeah. But <clears throat> I think that's a tackle you'll see slipping. But you look at guys like like uh, Charles Cross, uh, Akeem Aquanu, Evan, Evan Neal. Those three guys, they're going to go in the top 10, the top 15. I think that's just a lock to happen. But I, I do, like you mentioned, like DB, I think that is a position that could fly off the board, corner and safety, because I think as soon yep. as a guy like Derek Stingley goes, I think that's what sets the bar right there. But besides – You don't think Sauce Gardner is going to go for him? <clears throat> I, like, I like Stingley no, better. No, he shouldn't. He shouldn't. Yeah, I like Stingley better. I mean, but I'm I – I'm just saying what's going to happen. I think Gardner is going to go first. No, I think that uh, Sting, they have a lot of LSU practices uh, film, and some of them got released of him guarding Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. And I, and I think that, um, like, teams might trade up to get him. Like, I think he may go top five. Well, yeah, Dude, well, I, I didn't hear that. They, that might. they were sitting there talking to Derek Stingley. Like, I was hearing his name two to three years ago. How about this guy was like, oh, yeah, he's been the, the next Jalen Ramsey. Like, this is the dog. Well, it was the same corner. thing with, like, Grand Delp, that they all wear number <coughs> seven, the historic number down there for the top DB or whatever. He's yeah, I, that guy, I think they won the Natty. He, he's, he's, he's really good. And, and he played slot um, a lot early in his career there. And so I think a lot Nashville of teams put him in the slot. 
Yeah. And you know how important that slot is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's best receiver, like, like CD is going to be run out of the slot now with Cooper gone, you know, full time, you know, and that's the best receiver on the Cowboys. You know, Samuel runs out of the slot. Devontae runs out of the slot, you know, and, and you're talking about like, like, well, Ramsey travels, you know, but how many other corners travel? I mean, this guy will travel with you and he'd be good right away. You know, and I, I think agree. the I think I think uh, Bryce said like it's a lock for the Jets with with Thibodeau. I think Stingley's going to the Jets. Okay. All right. But you're right. I think Gardner's hey, right behind your top him. five cornerback right there. Yeah, but I think I think it's, I know, it's for them. It's for, it's for them. It's for them. They have two, two, two pretty high picks, and like I said before, um, they're not gonna be in the playoffs no. you know so they're just trying to build Salah's defense and you know he he's gonna p- put a lot of pressure on those corners um and do those things and I think he's perfect and he's gonna let them sit in zone sometimes and he's gonna put him in man why not go get a guy that knows how to play the position yeah. you know and then once he goes Ruckman I, I agree Gardner's gonna go in the first 10 and then you know that Trent McDuffie from Washington I mean, he's going to yeah, be right there yeah. behind them. I agree. And then I think you're going to get, like, the Hamilton. I think Hamilton will go off the board, similar to around when them guys go. I mean, considering <clears throat> he's a safety, I just still think the back of your field, the back of your team is is so important nowadays in the league. And with with you talking about slot receivers getting, <clears throat> getting the ball a lot and, and having guys like your best receiver in the slot – these corners, I mean, a lot of these corners in this draft are the slot, the slot build. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you look at guys like, like Stingley. I mean, you look at a guy even like Gardner, like who's probably capable of playing the slot. And then you look at a guy, uh, what's his name, the guy from uh, Clemson. Who's the guy? From? Andrew Booth. Is Booth. That Booth. You look at a guy like that who's probably possibly going to go in the second round. <clears throat> so I mean, I think you're looking at DB being. A possibility that that could fly off the board. I mean, you say Trent McDuffie, uh, even Love the guy from Elon from Florida. Elon from Florida uh, Daxton yeah, Hill. I think it just depends on what you like. You know, I think I think McDuffie is going to be a slot. I think he's. I think people know that, and it's so funny because like fan bases are always like, "What the heck is that guy guarding Devontae Adams for?" What yeah. you know? But corners don't travel. Like they don't like. And that's why these new breed of corners that are starting to come out are guys that have played slot before, you know. Yeah. And but you and I both know how many cornerbacks moved in this offseason. Oh, wow. How many do you see going to free agency? You know, it's positions like that that don't have any movement. You exactly. know, if you need a cornerback and you're picking at like like the Vikings, they need a corner. Yeah. You know, and so I think they're sitting at like you know, 12, maybe it's 12. It might be a Ooh, little Minnesota? after that. Yeah, they're yeah at 12. Where are they? Minnesota's at 12. They're sitting there at 12. You know, they they need corner, and they need it bad. Like, I see team needs corner, edge rusher, receiver. Well, they don't need a wide receiver, okay? I'll tell you that right now. Now, if we didn't take Jordan Love and we took Jefferson, yeah, they probably would need a receiver. <laughs> and I'm going to still talk about that, Bryce, because it still bothers me. I, I mean, I, I'd, I'd be pissed, but, too. You and I both know if the top two corners are off the board, which they should be before they pick, what are they going to do? You know, you trade down and risk someone else taking a corner, or you got you take McDuffie, you know, who probably well, isn't a top, 20 in that top 10 overall yeah, guy. Right, but he's probably not a top 12 guy. But like we said at the beginning of this whole thing, it's the draft and how people t- and what people are going off the board and what happens, that dictates what, what people are going to do. Or how about how about this scenario where you're looking at these DBs coming off the board if they do before 12 with Minnesota needing a DB? Do you look at a possibility of if you're Minnesota trading back to 20 with Pittsburgh, a team that's quarterback needy? And obviously, like you said, these quarterbacks are not great, but you know teams get greedy when they want a quarterback, and it's <laughs> there, there's no there's no limit to how early you can get these guys. So I, I I mean yeah, but Justin Fields, I mean he's. Justin Fields is better. Way about trading up three, four years ago for losing all your picks for Mitchell Trubisky. 
Oh, yeah. That's I mean, it's the risk. A little hesitant trading up also in the draft, I believe. It's just the risk you ta- you have to take, though, nowadays. I yeah, mean, Trubisky's better than Jordan Love. <laughs> I mean, probably. Probably. I mean, Jordan right Love. Now, he's in this. Pittsburgh. Yeah, he sounds good. Trubisky's yeah, in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. So, so that's a perfect example, and I think you make a good point with Pittsburgh, is the teams that are going to take quarterback are going to be teams that don't need that quarterback to play this year. Oh, yeah. And I, None of these I guys are capable that, of doing it. Right, and I, but I think like, um, you know, like Malik Willis and, and, and Matt Corral, like they could do it. I think they're very good. You know, um, I have to remind Gannon all the time, um, this is like my optimistic side, um, is that Kenny Pickett's five months older than Jordan Love. <laughs> five months wow. older, Bryce. And the dude's been in the NFL for two years. And so I have to remind Gannon, I'm like trying to talk myself into it. Like maybe this guy will stay after Aaron. Maybe he'll be okay. You know, um, would I like him play better in the games? Like absolutely. Will I always hold the grudge? Yeah, but it's the same GM that took Jair Alexander. You know, how can I, you know, how can you be mad about that? I mean, the dude was – you never even heard of Jair Alexander until the Packers reached and took him, you know. And that's that's what I'm saying about the corner receiver is, um, you know, years ago, A.J. Brown, Terry McLaurin, Debo, you know, all those guys go in the second round or later, yeah. you know, because receiver and D.K., they all went in the second round or later, you know. And so teams stopped taking receiver – until last year, and Jamar Chase goes. How does that impact the receiver class? You know, do we see as a receiver go up into the top five or ten now this year that maybe shouldn't, but because they're looking for Jamar Chase, you know, they have to do it, you know, or they want to do it. You know what I mean? How do you know? What do you think there? Honestly, I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, no, I agree. I just think, I, I think there's this draft to me is just so intriguing in the sense that like. I think this will be a draft where you see like some of the most movement we've seen in in quite some time in these last couple of drafts. I just think there's so many teams that are in spots right now that just don't fit the player that that they're going to be right. looking for, the player that they need. <clears throat> and I think there's going to be a lot of teams in that top 10 area that want to slide back and a lot of teams in this in the 20 to 32 range that want to come up a little bit. And I just think that it's going to be interesting, and it's definitely going to mix up the second round as well with all these deals that that take place. But one one last thing that I want to mention on part one of this draft show is I'm very intrigued to see 29 and and 30 with Kansas City having back to back picks this year after making the trade, sending Tyreek out. You haven't you haven't seen Kansas City have two first round picks like that, and personally, I think they're going to go after grab a receiver. Uh, I mean, you'd think, but. 29 to 30, that's kind of intriguing because you look at a team with two first-round picks, just like Green Bay, just like Philly, just like uh, is it the Saints, teams like that that are having these two first-round picks this year. Like They have the capability to be able to move back, move up, and that's what's going to shake up this draft for me. So I think it's quite interesting you look at teams like that. Uh, but you guys have any final thoughts for, for part one of this draft show and anything else you guys want to say, throw it in here right now. <clears throat> Um, yeah, one more thing. Christian Watson from North Dakota State, sleeper pick for me overall. <laughs> back around. He's also a return guy, all American FCS. So I think that's a really big pick. You get two positions and one right there in the pack of special teams is big god awful. And um with Basashio, their new special teams coordinator, I think that's maybe have a little influence in the draft and getting some guys really with them before. That's kind of my big guy. So under the radar. Who's your sleeper pick, Swelly? Uh, uh, well, I think that, um, I'm going to butcher his name. It's, uh, Arnold, uh, it's like E.B. Akite, E.B. Akiti from Penn Penn State. State. (laughs) Oh man. I think someone's going to take him. I think he's going in the first round. Okay. Uh, There's your Gregory Rousseau right there. (laughs) But I, I, I think, um, you know, if, I think he just is raw, you know, um, where I think Rousseau just didn't produce. He had good production at Penn State. Um, I just think that someone will take him because edge rushers are at a premium and someone will take him. But I will say I got I got two things. I got Penning. P- 
Penning, I think, is going to go to the K- Kansas City in one of those picks. Okay. I think that he fits like a Travis Kelsey. Um, I think he's uh, he's a grinder. Like, he's dirty. Like, he'll get in someone's face. And I think yeah. Andy Reid loves that. I think I like, that's – I agree with that. I mean, to live here. I mean, I think that's how these people in Missouri are. I think yeah. that, like, he – is he's going to have problems, but what better people than Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes to get the dude in line? Yeah. You know? And, yeah, and then I got one question for you, Bryce, to leave you. And Gannon, yeah. it's over under, okay? Over under one running back going in the first round. Oh, 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 oh. I don't – Honestly, to me, I'm under. I'm going under. I'm going. Yeah, one. I'm I'm under as well. So you're going zero. You got zero. Not none. I'm going zero. And I think the only possibility for running back goes round one. It's got to be Brees Hall, right? Yeah. It's okay. Gotta. So we're standing at one. So let me. So if I'm saying one, I got to go the over. You just say even. You could be yeah, even. Yes, so I'm a soft split. I'm going even because I think there's going to be one. You can't. I don't think it's going to be a shutout. Somebody's going to want to take a running back. I would see. I could see a team like Kansas City grabbing some that would Clyde to you, freaky, you know. weird running back. Yeah, like I don't know. It's possible. I'm I'm going under though. I'm I I just don't think this shut is, out. I just think this second round is prime for that. Like I just don't think it's necessary to reach for one right like early in this first round. But I do want to add in. And my, who, who needs one? That's another tough situation. Who's picking late? Who is picking late? No one that's picking late needs. But you know, but you know who, but you know who's gonna, you know who I think could trade down and take a running back is Arizona because uh, Edmonds went to Miami and they like James Conner, but they don't like him to have the full load. Oh yeah, and it probably it could be somebody that has an earlier pick also in the first round that traded down or something too if a second backup turnaround pick that it's not their only first round guy too. I agree. I want to throw in my sleeper pick, though. My sleeper pick, you went edge with Penn State. I want to go edge with David Ajabo from Michigan. That's that's my guy right there. I think he – Well, I he's a sleeper now. Yeah. I now don't, that he got hurt. Yeah, yeah, now that he's hurt. Yeah, but I just – I don't think the guy's – he's not Taco Charlton. He, he's not a, He's not the, the typical DN from Michigan where you're looking at him you're like, can he can he be good? Is he good? Where Dallas is over here reaching. This guy's gonna be damn good. He's gonna. This be guy's good. good, Bryce. He's real good. Yeah. He's gonna be damn He's good. Better than Hutchinson for the majority of the football season. Okay. Okay. I My watch other... a lot of Michigan football. Ruckman knows that I hate Michigan football, but I watch a lot of Michigan football, and I'll tell you right now, I'd rather have him than Hutchinson yeah. for the value. For the value. Mm-hmm. Now he's got to get healthy and do some things, but. Hey, the medical field's a lot different than it was five years ago. That oh, guy's gonna yeah. be on the field just fine. That's oh, yeah. why none of those scouts budged. You seen the video? Them guys didn't care. People are like, look at those scouts. They don't care. No, they didn't care because they knew the guy's gonna be fine in six months. <laughs> you know, like yeah. and that's a harsh reality, you know, but science and medicine is different than it used to be. You know, they can 100%. get dudes back out there. You saw Joe Burrows walking after three months, like you know, like, come on, that never happened. You know, no. you're lucky if you were 12 months back on the field. Now they're getting on the field nine months after ACL. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, that's all I got for this episode, part one of our NFL draft show. Appreciate you coming on here, Coach Swelly. Appreciate that. Uh, it was nice to have you on here and talk draft. Uh, we had a great conversation. Looking forward to part two. Uh, I got nothing else to say. You guys got anything? Any final final remarks? Go boys. Yeah, appreciate you joining us, big man. All right, tune back in. Tune back in next week for part two. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Continue to Gronk Spike that subscribe button for us. Leave a like. Share these videos. NFL Draft is coming next week. Uh, Stay tuned. Get in check. Watch some film. Uh, Check out this draft, mock drafts. All you got to do to prepare yourself for the NFL Draft next Thursday.